Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant through my company, Onyx Reporting, and today we're going to talk about building weekly forecasts, well, monthly forecasts in Dome. Don't change the channel. You have this problem. You just maybe don't recognize it because you're like, I don't do forecasts. But stick with me for a second. Doing forecasting or budgeting um, or even that thing in, in marketing where you're like, I've got leads and leads get converted into opportunities and opportunities get converted into sales, like that tunnel, sales funnel, is that what it's called? That kind of analysis. They all speak to the same kind of problem. And I see people do all sorts of mental gymnastics to try to like build a card and analyze. I've seen things like this user is doing here with this sum distinct. You should probably never use sum distinct. I'm just going to throw that across. Um, I've also seen people try to do like um, aggregate functions using like sum max over. I've seen people build ETLs where they have like a different ETL for each forecast in any of these solutions will work for that one visualization. But as soon as you try to extend it and use it in multiple different places or have different have the, the visualization still be responsive to filters, that's where people really fall over themselves and get tripped up. So in this video, I'm gonna show you, I think what should be your baseline approach to structuring all of your data in Domo that have different grants. When I say different granularity, what I mean by that is, like, think about forecasts. There's one row per month per state or sales rep. Um, and on the transactional side, I can have many hundreds, thousands of sales in a month for that sales rep. So how do I combine those two data together? Do I join them and go with this some distinct approach? Do I pre-aggregate the data using a big old group by clause? How do I combine the data? Stick with me, we're gonna go over that. Here's my raw data, just some sample data set I found on the internet. Um, and I'm selling widgets and stuff. <laughs> and I've got a date call, fine. Now let's talk about my forecast. I'm gonna hide these. Okay, let's talk about forecasting. Um, I worked at a company that did forecasting, but they did something a little bit strange. And so I wanted to cover it in this, in this tutorial. Um, so they did most of their forecasting by uh, location. So they would have a state, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, which would roll up into the region east. But the east total was not the sum of the uh, forecast quantity or forecast amount for each state. You, you can see that, right? The sum of this is 1,150, whereas the total is 350. Right? How do I build this ability to have different um, forecast roll-ups? Or you know, maybe in addition to forecasting by region, I wanted to have a set of forecasts per salesperson. Right? How do I handle that in my ETL or in Domo? Well, let me show you. It's actually not. I'm going to start by creating a sample forecast. Um, I, I uploaded this data all earlier, but then I was like, you know what, Jay, it's not hard enough. Why don't you make this example a little bit more comprehensive and or different? Do that. Oh no, come on. Such a good start. I don't want to have to start this recording over again. Okay, so I have a forecast type, and I've got my region, I've got the location, including my east total. I have the year month activity forecast. Yeah, okay. Good, I have my data. Let's build ourselves our east. So I'm going to pull in my sample data, and I'm going to pull in my forecast. And let's see how they are similar and how they are different. So 
I'm just going to start out with the pro tip. This is the answer to the question. Use an append instead of a join. This should be your goal for all of your data in Domo. Try to, whenever possible, I'm talking about activity or transactions. I ask myself, can I do an append instead of a join? That is the fundamental thing that most Power BI people really struggle with. It's the fundamental thing that I see actually everyone who comes to Domo struggle with. But that's the answer. Try to. All right. Um, in order to append, though, I want to make sure that my columns have overlapping names. So you can see here in this append, I'm removing these columns because they don't have similar names. Now, columns like forecast quantity and sales will not exist in my sales data. So there's, there's no equivalent. But a column like year or a column like order date, maybe there's some sort of equivalent. So one of the first things I like to put into my data set are select. When I'm doing this kind of restructuring of the data, put in a select so that I can rename the columns that have or that are similar. And then I can also drop columns that are unnecessary. So in my um, sample data, for whatever reason, um, it comes with a year. And I don't care about the year of the data because I can derive that from the date. Um, what else? OK, I don't. Sorry, I thought I dropped. Yeah, OK. So price is confusing. I'm going to rename this unit price, sorry, item price, so that when you see it, you know that it's an attribute of price is an attribute of the item. You don't want to take the sum of the price. That doesn't make sense. But I do have a sales quantity and a sale amount. That makes sense. Instead of having a column called order date, I'm going to rename it date. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because in my forecast table, I could have a date column. Or if I was combining you know, multiple sets of data together, I don't want to have order date, ship date, and X, Y, Z other date. I just want to have one column. I'm going to conform my column, give them similar names. So how am I doing? Right. So first challenge, um, my forecast is not one forecast per day. It's one forecast per year month, so 2016-01. So in order to have a similar column in my data set, I'm going to use a formula. Here. But uh, I think I'm using capital D for date. And then I'm going to create date, year, month. And that is going to be the year of my date column times 100 plus the month my date column, and that's how you calculate. Run my preview, but also, OK, so now I've, I've gone from having columns that don't overlap to, OK, this is just about my forecast, and these columns don't have an equivalent in sales. OK, cool. So I have a column called forecast type. If I filter where the forecast type is location, then I will just have location-based uh, forecast. If I filter where the forecast type is region, then I will just have the regional forecast. You know what I'm going to do? Instead of calling this forecast type, I'm going to call this activity type. OK? And add a. I lied. I'm not going to rename forecast type activity type. I am going to create a new column. Ooh, I'm going to be cheeky. Show off a feature of Magic 2.0. OK, so I am going to call forecast type activity type after all. Sorry, I'm making this up as I go along, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, just concatenate. 
What do I want to concatenate? I'm going to concatenate activity type and forecast. I want to just add the word forecast to the end of whatever is contained in activity type. And I'm going to do that transformation in place. So if you're working with Magic 2.0 and you have a formula tile, if it turns black like this, it's going to overwrite the existing column. Super cool feature, Domo. Love it. All right. So now I have a column called activity type. And then down here, I'm going to add a column called activity type in the sales. And I'm just going to call this actuals. Cool. Now, output my data set. Stack bills and forecast. Okay. So this is a modeling technique that I use literally for all of my customers. I try to avoid building a data set that only works for one card. I try to build flexible data sets that I can recycle for many um, use cases. And the key to that is to avoid free aggregating my data. Those of you who've done forecasting before, but you join the data, usually you join the data and then you apply a group by clause. Notice here, I don't have a group by clause. So if I have 50,000 transactions and 20 forecast rows, I will have. 50,000 and 20 in my output, right? Because I'm doing an append, not a join, and not a group. Cool. I think I can run this. Should be super fast. In my sample data set, I have 5,684 rows. In my output data set, I should have 5,684 plus 100. Okay, good. Let's build ourselves a car. You know me, always a fan of the old table card. All right, guys, get ready to have your minds blown. So I have my year month. I have my, oh, I have my mistake. Your mind won't be blown yet. In my ETL, I chose to remove columns. So I only include shared columns. I do need to set that to include all columns. But I always start with only include shared. So I make sure that I have overlapping columns. Short version story, set it to include all. And you're good. That's going to run. Me. Card. So I can now take the sale amount, and I can take the sum of that, and I can take the forecast, and I can take that, and this will give me the right number. Now, you're saying, Jay, no, that's not the right number, because in your forecast, you are including both um, your regional total as well as your state, your location, whatever it's called. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a location forecast amount case when, and I can use that activity type I created earlier. Remember, activity type says actuals for actuals, and then location forecast for regional forecast. So when the activity type equals location forecast, then return the And I'm going to wrap this in a sum function. Function. And so this number, location forecast, is less than total forecast because this now includes just the location. And I'll do the opposite for my regional. Cool. 
Did I misspell it? Region, not region. Okay. And because I have super basic beast mode, like sum, <laughs> I can easily do a sum of column A minus a sum of column B, or a sum of metric A minus a sum of metric B. So if I want to know the variance, take the sum of sale amount minus the sum of the forecast. It's super important that you write it this way, not this way. I'll let you think about that. Or, yeah. Cool. And now I have location variable. I should have led with that. <laughs> because that's the part where people are like doing some distinct and in, in all of that weird math. But I can avoid that right now. Um, and does that math out? My, for, my actuals were 52,000. My forecast was 286,000. So mathematically, I'm 233 short. Yes, that is, that is good math. That number is a lot higher. You know what? I got to trust it. I got to trust it. That's, that's what's in the data. Now you're thinking, okay, but Jay, what if I want to filter on a region or if I want to filter on a location? Fine. When I apply my region filter, filter on west, this works as expected. I can see numbers and, you know, they, they make sense. I'm looking at the western. Fine. Now, what happens, though, if I filter by location? Or here, let me just put location on the back. So in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, I have a location amount. I got capture of area. Um, for east total, right, that's, there is no location amount. And that makes sense because that's what's in the data. I do have a regional forecast amount. So then I can calculate, you know, the regional variance. And that was because, remember, I wanted to have a different target for the region versus each location. That was just structured. Guys, this model works. Um, and when I say I use it for every single customer I work with, it's no exaggeration. Literally every customer, it's probably appropriate to use a method where you're building ETL that is based on an append, not a join. Well, and specifically where I'm appending transactional data together. This is how you mash up different sets of data, opportunities and leads, or sales and forecasts and budget, or finance, financial data and budget. This is the right way to do it. If you find yourself doing a lot of joins, just don't. All right, so user 018968. I hope you find this helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck on your Domo journey. My name is Jay Wilson. I am a freelance consultant through my company, Onyx Reporting. If you need help um, getting your Domo implementation up and running, if you're looking for ways to like spend less time pulling out hair and actually doing valuable analysis, um, give me a holler at jae at onyxreporting.com and we'll see if I can help you out.